more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Top billing. All right, y'all, fly, Eagles, fly. People want to focus on things that they perceive to not be going well. In a 2 and no start to the season, right? Listen, it's hard to win in the NFL. I don't give a damn what anyone says. Uh, we It's not like we've sustained a lot of success recently, right? We've had some, some good seasons. We had some up and down years. So sometimes you have to focus on things that have improved over time. So that run defense, I was harping on that bad boy all off season. I cannot stand to see my Philadelphia Eagles be laxed against the run. It's just not Philadelphia football. Sound, sound line of scrimmage play. That's what the first thing I always think about with the Philadelphia Eagles, right? My man, Coach Reed, really established that even before him, though, right? You know what I'm saying? With my man, Buddy Ryan, my dude right there. It's really been a, a program focused on line of scrimmage play. So you can't have, to me, a, a very good defense if you can't stop the run. So... After two games, you have to say, man, that looks much improved. A lot of guys are contributing there. Jordan Davis looking a lot better uh, than before there. But I want to focus on this cat, Zach Cunningham. I knew when they got Zach Cunningham that they were getting a supreme tackling machine. Ever since he was at Vanderbilt, right, and he had that crazy-ass game against the University of Georgia. I want to say they beat Georgia or something like that back then. Uh, he <laughs> was piling up like 15, 20 tackles, so... This guy can really get after it. And he's putting some really good stuff stuff on film here, right? So if we see this right here, they're running out of a balanced formation. So there's no uh, delineation between strong and free, or, or you know what I mean, or, or strong and weak right here. Him and Nicholas Morrow, uh, they're, they're both perhaps wherever this run is going. That's why his balance, right? You have Two tight ends, uh, but they're not on the same side. So this run, run could go this way, which will make him the strength to the strength of the formation, or it could go this way. He's normally better as a take-on player, but look at him chase, right? My man is searching and sifting weak side. Look at his weak side scrape here. Look at that. Uh, skirt under the block, keep a narrow plane, and bang! He makes the solo tackle working weak side. It was somebody in here in the comment section said that he looks slow. He's never been the most fleet of foot, but I don't think he's any he's anything but slow, right? Look at this right here. Skirt under the block right there, keeping that narrow plane flat down the line of scrimmage. This is great here by Mario Goodrich, right? Very physical nickel back in his own right right there, keeping that edge contained. Same thing with Josh Sweat. He's giving it up, right? Boss, he's giving up his body right here because he wants this run to be funneled back inside. You funnel it back inside, it's up to your weak side players there. We see Morrow as a front side player, he's locked up on a block, right? Same deal right here, I believe that's Jalen Carter right here. Look at him scrape backside and make the play. That's good run defense, that's Philadelphia Eagles football. He's putting a whole bunch of shit on film showing his versatility. All right, I need you guys to pay attention to the nuances here. This is your regular 3-4 set. You got somebody on the shade right here, right? The nose is shaded. Uh, you have your regular stack linebackers right here. Inside linebackers, not a middle linebacker. So when it's a 3-4 set, they're inside linebackers. You have a weak and a strong side linebacker. On this one right here, Cunningham is actually the weak side backer. But you know what you do in this day and age? You run weak side, <laughs> right? Force that weak side player to have to stack and shed blocks. They picked the wrong guy. This guy is used to stacking and shedding blocks because he's more of a strong side player, right? You see this? You can see them switch gaps right there, right? They have to be in their proper gaps, so then bang, look at that. Oh, got around the block. I see him take on blocks. We see him skirt blocks right here. Get that combo up, right? Let's see what they're running right here. All right, so just your regular, regular zone play, right? Weak zones, zone weak right here. And you got combination block up to him. He's keeping his eyes on the target. A lot of these guys right here, they will panic in this situation and just start worrying about the block and just totally give themselves up, right? They'll give it up. But not him. He skirts around the box, shows presence in that gap, and look, bang, he's in there. Who else got in there with him? Nasty, though. Looks like the nose got in there with him. Probably Jordan Davis, I would have to imagine. Now, this is some good work. Now, he's aligned to the strength of the formation here, but this becomes play action into a leak out screen. So he's going to be sifting weak side. They're running this as a weak side play right here. 
play action, set up, and look at him continue to work. Actually, let's go back right there. You're going to have some clean, clean this. Why don't you let the play play all the way? Okay, Mr. Internet Man. You see right there? Uh, working that. <laughs> man. If you're in the line black and play like your boy right here, man, these type of plays that have you jump out of your seat. Look at this right here. Look at him stay parallel to the line of scrimmage. You see him shuffling right there? Listen, I'm here to teach you the nuances of the game. Everybody in their grandmama pick up a damn computer and think there's some type of film analysis. None of these dudes even play it, right? I'm showing you the nuances that I was taught right there as playing football. You stay and keep presence in the gap by shuffling. Now, right there, my man's already know he's in trouble, right? He's bluffing like he's going to start blocking. And then, look, as soon as that starts to happen right there, he rushes. Make sure... That he keeps that outside shoulder free right there. And look, he ends up three stooges and somebody running the offensive lineman into each other and gets himself a solo tackle back there. Look like a loss, a tackle for loss so at that. You can't tell me Zach Cunningham can't play no football. The dude is a, is a godsend, a breath of fresh air in a season that we need at the very least, average to above average linebacker. Sometimes you can make the play without making the play if you get what I'm saying. You get a double at the point of attack here off of my boy, Fletcher Cox. And what you get is a G lead. My man right here is going to be leading up through and he's going to right be taking on your boy, Zach Cunningham. But look at this. He makes the play without making the play. You saw that? My man didn't take himself out of the play. A lot of people right here, they would just pretty much uh, shrivel up, right? Like a raisin right there. He takes this and makes sure that this has to go back to the inside where there are players at. As you can see right there, Madison having to go back because my man hit him with one of them stool softening hits. Look at that. Bang! Stool softened. Duco Lacks hit of the week right there. All in his guts, right? Shit is bubbling right there. You're going to have to wool light his draws, obviously. He's going to be on the toilet. It's going to be smooth selling on the toilet, though. I'll give him that, though. But look, right back in there, that's what good run defense is about. A lot of it is just help defense, straight up. I've said it before. On obvious passing downs, I would love for them to go to big dime. There's no need for two linebackers to be in the game. Linebackers can't cover like that in this day and age. I want somebody to come to me and show me the best handful of guys who can cover at the linebacker position, bro. It's scarce, right? So on this one right here, you get mesh concept going, right? This was a critical down and distance here. I believe it was third down here. You get that mesh concept going. They're trying to uh, make these guys have to think on the fly, whether they have to banjo or whatever like that. They do a good job of sitting in his own here. Zach Cunningham damn near gets himself a pick on this. Look at that. You saw that? Uh, if any better of a throw right here, it may have actually been picked off right here. Look at that. He peeks inside like he's going to follow that inside. So that gives Kirk Cousins uh, a sight plane to think because he's working off of him to think like, all right, Justin Jefferson's going to be able to be open right here. But nope, look who starts on that right there. He's going to meet that shit at the point of intercept. Kirk Cousins go ahead and commits to it, has no chance or no, he has no choice because the time's running out. Look at the pocket collapsing on him and everything like that. And my man's in good position to intercept this pass if it was a better pass right there. Nothing you could do about it. Like I said before, if you're not going big dime, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing right here, but he's in mad coverage. And this is a pretty good break on the ball right here. Even if this was a better throw, sometimes your coverage dictates the throw. Kirk Cousins is going to want to get this a little bit more outside because he's in the general vicinity of it right there. He wants to make sure it's not intercepted. And, uh, man, even if he caught that right there, my man would have had a, a good chance of either breaking it up or he was just leaving a man where he's standing right there. So, come on now. Got to give it up. Right, so, a cynic or a pessimist is going to say, uh, maybe those teams just aren't good running teams. What we shall see as the schedule unfolds. If they're not good running teams, you make them look like not good running teams. And that's exactly what the Philadelphia Eagles did. So, so far, so good. We'll see uh, Monday night against Tampa. Uh, hopefully to see the same gap fits. Ho hopefully to see, to see the same approach up front. Very aggressive up front, but also being very gap sound. That's what having a cat like Fletcher Cox around to get you, right? And, um, of course, all the young guys that are coming up behind him there. Milton Williams and uh, Carter Davis and all these guys. Tui Pelotu. I mean, everybody contributed. Contavious Street when he comes in there. So it's a lot of a lot of depth there. 
but it's a lot of sound and technical football as well. So there you have it, man. Your boy Jersey Murph as always, man. Give you them goods, man. Uh, serving you that hibachi. Make sure you tip your waiter, baby. You know I'm serving that hibachi, and you know you get uh, something from that hibachi being served right there. All right, so big shout-outs to South Jersey, of course, man. Big shout-outs to Cumberland County, Burlington County, Mercer, uh, of course, Ocean County, uh, parts of Atlantic County. My beloved Atlantic City, Millville, Violent Bridgeton, stand up, of course, uh, shout outs to uh, Camden, right? I was just in Camden yesterday, man. Shout outs to Camden. You boys, boys be wild out there. Uh, shout outs to South Philly. I was in South Philly yesterday as well. So um, Delaware, Elton, Maryland. Uh, you know how we do it, baby. Wilmington, Newcastle, all you boys out there. All right. Jersey Murph is always signing off, man. <clears throat> what more can I say? Top billing. Top.